I could have your attention, please? I hope that's nice and loud. You can find your seats. We'll get started. Please take your seats. If you don't have your ticket with you now, you can pay on the way out. That's good. Okay, let's stand away from the desserts now. Back off from the desserts, please. Okay. Um, we need a little assistance for the people sitting near the fire. Um, halfway through the program, could you turn them around so they can get done on the other side? I, I have a couple of, of notes here. Um, first of all, I want to thank you all for coming. It's uh, a wonderful crowd. Um, somebody told me after scanning the crowd that anybody that is anybody in Topanga is here tonight. I, I feel in self-defense, I must say that's not actually true. My wife's not here. A um, couple of procedural notes. Um, we're a society, a historical society in town, and um, we're looking for members. It's very reasonable, and we certainly could use your support, both moral and financial. The financial uh, burden is very light. I, uh, I think I just paid $20 tonight, someone tackled me. And um, for my whole family, and individual memberships are a lot less. Pearl, could you stand up? Where's Pearl? Uh, Make your way over to Pearl at any time. Feel free to stop or interrupt the program. We don't care. We're desperate. Okay. Um, next item, more money. My wife made me promise that I would come and uh, hold up this e-script thing. Um, for those that don't know what e-script is, um, local stores, in this case Vons, um, give a percentage of whatever you spend in the store to the elementary school. And it's come to the school's parents' attention that many of us go to Vons and the school gets nothing simply because you haven't put your name on this piece of paper. It costs you absolutely nothing whatsoever. You just have to have a Vons card which costs nothing. Um, you know, to give you an idea, view, viewpoint up the street there, I just heard today makes $22,000 a year for the school. You can't enroll unless you fill this out. They will not accept your student. We're not quite that heavy, and we're, I'm told we only make $6,000 a year. So, so let's try and change that. Um, you know, I mean, if, if in Florida they can enroll people for elections this way, um, we should be able to do e-script. So I'm, I'm going to give this to Pearl as well on, on a, as a goodwill thing. And anybody that signs up for eScript, sell them a membership, Pearl. Why don't you just pass it? Yeah. We'll sign it as, as a yeah, pass. It around, boys. I don't know. That's much too logical. <laughs> when they elected me, it was just a figurehead position. They didn't want me to think. Okay, I'm running out of little scribbled notes here. Um, I'd like to do a presentation, actually. Um, how many people went to the Topanga Philharmonic Orchestra this last year? All right. That was fun. It was a good thing, and, and we appreciate Guido and, and Ed all putting it on. The real force behind it, anyone that knows, was Michelle Johnson. Could she come up here, please?
this is the Gar Garapatos or something like that school, our old school in 1903 with the headmaster and students from our archive collection. It's a reprint uh, with a description and signatures of the uh, historical board on the back. Um, and we wanted Michelle to have that because I have never seen anything like the, the job Michelle did. I mean, it was like having the best organization of the world all wrapped up in one woman. And, um, Job, had so much energy about it that it made my job easy. So thank you. Thank you. That's a good point. I think in, in total, I figured up once, I, what was the number? It was several hundred people were involved in putting TPO on, if you include the orchestra and the volunteers and, and everything. And I want to thank every one of them as, as well. Um, a real community effort, and it works out very well. Uh, Michelle has also graciously accepted to uh, uh, be the uh, producer of the new uh, Topanga story, the second edition of the uh, Topanga story. You're all familiar with the book that Louise York wrote. It'll be uh, updated and re-edited and, and hopefully reissued. And we felt so strongly in Michelle's leadership that uh, the board of the Historical Society said they wouldn't do it unless she would be in charge of it. She probably never knew that. We didn't, we didn't lay that on her, but since she has accepted, I'll tell her that that was actually the case. Um, so I want to thank her for that, too. I'm going to be an optimist and assume tonight's program is going to be the, the home run, um, since it's a uh, second part and the first part was a home run. So I'm going to tell you about upcoming programs. Uh, January 15th. Uh, that's next year, 2003. Uh, it's our 30, 30th anniversary bash here at the Topanga Historical Society. And Ami Kirby, our very own archivist, will be presenting a slide review of highlights of the Topanga Historical Society's uh, past, featuring uh, past programs and, and leaders, and uh, sort of the best of the archives of the Topanga Historical Society. So you might want to mark uh, the third Wednesday in January, the 15th, down on your calendar. Uh, following that, uh, date not yet determined, we have another upcoming program that will focus on the Topanga folk music. Uh, the scene is basically the 50s and 60s and will feature a variety of local residents and musicians who are active during that period. We're still hoping that we can uh, cull some people out of the woodwork for this and anybody that uh, has information or would like to participate in any way should see Mary Bloom. Will you stand up, Mary? <laughs> Mary is our resident brain trust that comes up with the ideas for all these programs. They have a lot of help. And, and we appreciate it. Um, okay, our program tonight, finally, I assume that's why you can, um, maybe for the food, um, is part two of 50 years of art in Topanga. Our guest speaker is artist Megan Rice. Will you stand up? Come on up. That's before the show. <laughs> uh, Megan is the daughter of Topanga icons Jack and Barbara Rice. Megan has lived in Topanga since 1956. She attended art school in London, England, and received a BA in Fine Arts at Mills College in Oakland. She's been teaching art privately in Topanga for 19 years. Megan is well suited to present this program since she had the privilege of knowing the artists and their families. Uh, Megan has chosen an eclectic group, uh, Richard Dare, Arnold Schifrin, John Rabin, Gordon Wagner. The later three, uh, latter three, called themselves the Brushfire School of Painting. They met for the first time, it says here, during the 1959 fire. 
Uh, Sid Francis, Raven Blake, Mary Wright, Bob DeWitt, Jim and Sue Sullivan, Jack Rice. He once said that Topanga was, the, was an easier place to be a pauper than anywhere else. Uh, I know that feeling. And Bob Harris. All of these artists were active in our community and added a special luster to it. Uh, with no more further ado, I'll turn you over to the reason you're here. Thank you, Megan. Children, 
lots of animals and homegrown vegetables. Bob was always painting or sculpting or drawing something. He was always barefoot and he often wore the huge Mexican hat. In 63, the DeWitt family left Topanga and moved up to Northern California, where they quickly created various nonprofit organizations that sponsor folk music, live theater, and art shows. These drawings uh, Bob DeWitt sent to me about five months ago, and I was not clear whether they were his old work or more current. Bob is 90 now and still drawing and sculpting. My God. That's Bob, Bob and Doey. What I remember about um, Bob DeWitt and being at his cafe was he always seemed wilder than kids. <laughs> so he was kind of scary. Yeah. <clears throat> Now Bob Harris, that did leather work. Bob was born in Chicago in 1942. He served in the Navy, attended UC Berkeley and Cal State Northridge. In 62, Bob met Richard Dare, who introduced him to a sandal maker and also to Topanga Canyon. Bob studied for two days with the sandal maker and then practiced making sandals for friends and family. Bob went into business with Kathy Rolf, selling handmade leather goods from a small shop where the Topanga General Store now stands. As well as having a myriad of Topanga patrons, Bob sold his sandals, boots, shoes, and bags to such illustrious ones as Harvey Keitel, Flip Wilson, and Steve McQueen. <laughs> In 1975, Bob went to work as a carpenter for the movie studios. But missing a creative outlet, Bob discovered the art of tile making. He formed a partnership with Jim Sullivan and named the business Ceramic Works. They were on the forefront of the rediscovery of the art tile movement, dedicated to fine, old-style craftsmanship. Bob's tile business is still in operation, and he is quoted as saying, anything that has to do with I think, oh, okay. Anything that has to do with selling art is very difficult. That's him.